Oliver, I'm right where you... Oh! Oh my! You actually came! Oh, do. Oh, do please come in. Come in! Forgive me for the change of plans. I was originally planning on being able to take you out somewhere nice for a bite to eat with little Evie, but she got so caught up in her, um, procedure, so I couldn't bear the thought of tearing her away from them. Especially considering that we'd probably spend more time cleaning up the carnage than actually repairing. It honestly just seemed like too much of a hassle, so I really hope that you don't mind. I don't think most surgeons will let the guts of their patients get strewn around the room, but, but hey, I'm not the doctor here. Pardon me for a second. Oh, Evie, dear, lunch will be ready soon. Be sure that you wash your hands. I mean, Surgeon General, you're losing the patient. The best thing you can do for the man now is to disinfect the area. Sorry. I mean, the best thing you can do for Mr. Bear now is to disinfect the area to prevent further contamination. Including those hands, little missy. And you're going to be cleaning those blood stains out of the carpet, too. <sighs> I... I think my husband, Oliver, ended up leaving House MD on one night, and I left Mystery Science Theater 3000 on another, and Evie ended up finding her through line somewhere in the middle. And they say that television rots your brain. The babes a scream. Now, would you like to help me with lunch? It's nothing too fancy, considering the only thing Evelyn wants to eat lately seems to be grilled cheese. At this point, I don't even know if that could be considered an autism thing or a five-year-old thing. I read online it could be about consistency in textures or taste, but it's not like her diagnosis is anything more than armchair psychology from a gal who was barely allowed to get her GED before getting... Well, that's all in the past anyways. Ah, right. I promised you a meal out, didn't I? I can compensate you for the worth of a restaurant meal on top of all this, if that helps. I know I promised you more. I don't mean to condescend or anything, or imply that I would. It's... Let me start over. I'm sorry. I do believe that you deserve more than this, you know. More than cheese sandwiches and chips, especially the good turn you gave me. I'm not even supposed to have chips in the house, but... I'm in something of an unsavory position here. The only reason I'm even able to have lunch with you like this is because... Well... Oliver... Oliver and I had something of a nasty spat, an argument. I just pray that Evie was able to sleep through it. I know I make him sound like a devil in a Sunday hat, but he's really not so bad. We don't even really fight that often. It was just that. A spat. A... Well... He's given me the rest of the week off from work for it. I think he's still sore about it and doesn't want to let anyone know he gets sensitive like that. I guess it's kind of cute in a... in a way, right? Showing off a brave face when he's really all fussy and grumpy. Girls think that's cute, usually. Don't they? Girls do. But I'm not really off, am I?
It's not that taking care of Evelyn is any sort of chore or anything. Not in the way that I or he would consider a labor that you clock in and out of, but it has to be a test, doesn't it? Oliver, he's, he's having me take off of work as a test. It's all a test for me. Faith, value, loyalty, love, even something like maternal instincts or ability to maintain appearances. He's looking for something from me. Something that I know I'd fail to provide if my husband just so happened to see me out to lunch with the babysitter. That's, I mean, scandalous, right? That's the kind of situation I've only ever heard of in P O R. Evie's in the other room. She might be listening. She doesn't need to know what that word means yet. She's but a wee lamb. <clears throat> I just wanted to clarify why the plans have shifted so thoroughly. I refuse to be the one who rocks the boat. If it's his fault, what does he have to lose? If he can't have me, he'll have someone else. Somewhere else. Somewhere far, far away from here. No skin off his nose, no water off his back. He's fluid like that. I envy his spontaneity even when it's at my own expense. But if it's mine... If I go from his high school sweetheart, who's just a little too out of her depths to cope with the fascinating world she resides in, to the bitchy head cheerleader gold digger looking to ride the carousel with tickets paid for by someone else's deep pockets, he could take everything from me. Because what else do I have to offer? I was a nobody before he loved me, and... Then I'd have the potential to be cast into nobodyness again. Could you imagine having them endure such a plight? Even if being nobody again would simply mean having my slate wiped clean of any involvement with Oliver. Would that include Evie? I don't know who I'd be without her now as my distant shore within this stormy sea I found myself in. But even if it did... Who's going to give a single mom like me the time of day? The sap and I were a package deal. If you can't love the teddy bear doctor, you're not going to love the medical assistant to the teddy bear doctor. What's that, honey? Vision assistant? Physician's assistant. You mean a physician's assistant. Don't worry about it, baby. Big words are hard. That's what we were just talking about. Right? Right? Right! So you don't have a thing to worry about, except for who's going to be playing teddy bear autopsist, medical examiner, funeral director, and or janitor. Of course, you silly goose. You want to help us make lunch? If you want, you can be the one who pours the chips into the bowls. You can even pick what flavor we have. You just gotta make sure that there's enough for everyone to share. Fair is fair, after all. Or, would you rather we all cook together, as a fam- You're right! It's always more fun to do things with friends, Evelyn. Wouldn't you agree?